1035, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and audio with soon to be added video on RTC Channel 4. Hello again, Scott. Good morning, sir. Hey, Scott's back in the studio with us. He has a permanent place in our hearts and also in our radio station. And of course, if you have a smartphone or an Android, download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going. 57 degrees and sunshine. And speaking of sunshine, John Alley, President and CEO of Lawn Hospitals in the studio. Good, good morning. I, I brought a guest today. I brought thought, some sunshine with yes, you. Yes, I thought we needed to kind of ramp up the, the <laughs> class and quality of, of this uh, uh, little program. So I've got uh, Becky Kopka, who's my director Excellent. of surgical services. And a little bit here, we'll have her discuss some okay. of the new procedures that we're doing at the hospital. Terrific, terrific. All right, talk about the board meeting yesterday, Board of Trustees. Very short board meeting. We had some presentations uh, from Ginger Richards, who's our uh, manager of our emergency department. And we've been trying to adopt a uh, system down there of an electronic medical record that really wasn't designed for an emergency room. It was more designed for the inpatient. Uh, our software vendor said, guys, you really need to make the switch. So she did the presentation yesterday to the board of a new EDIS system, which is going to be uh, just a fantastic improvement for the patients and is much more efficient for the physicians, the nurses. So, you know, what you know, we were kind of relating what maybe a, used to be an hour visit, might be a 45 minute visit because now everything's going to be so much more streamlined with this system. So we're looking, that's going to take quite a while to get that installed. We'll have to bring in the, the software vendor, load it into the system, do the training. So we're hoping you know, late June, maybe 1st of July at the latest, having that system in place, but just a tremendous improvement in the documentation and how we can track a patient. Right now, it's kind of all verbal. If somebody comes in, you know, they're saying, well, where did the patient from room two go? Are they in x-ray? Are they at lab? Now, it's all going to be electronic, so the physician will have what's called a, a whiteboard. They'll have the whole ED department laid out on it. Quick glance, he can see exactly where you're at in that process what tests have been ordered, what tests have been completed, have you left the department to go to radiology, much more efficient. So we should see a little quicker turnaround times. And it, you know, the patient safety is just the other thing. As we look, we've become, we've probably increased by 30 to 35% our volumes running through our emergency department. With that volume comes confusion. And you know, I, I go down there and kind of observe everyone in, and to me it looks like you know, organized chaos, but they know what they're doing. But this just adds another level of patient safety Whereas, you know, we're not relying on this verbal communication between a nurse and a doctor. It's going to be in the computer. It's going to be there right in front of him so he knows exactly what patient has what test done. So looking forward to getting that done. And of course, along with that, John, you also have in, in, in the works now, or actually in, it's being used right now, and that is people can go online with Woodlawn Hospital and sign up to find out right, through about the, their care and yes, how they're doing. Yeah, their patient portal. We have yes. both for the hospital and for our physician offices, two separate portals out there. We're trying to figure out how we can get it into one, but since it is two software systems, uh, they're not wanting to play well together at this <laughs> point. Uh, hopefully in the future that can be one portal, but yes, you can go out and get test results. You can communicate with your physician through the portal, send them an email, they can respond back. And it's just part of this, you know, electronic age where everybody's using their smartphones and their iPads and, and communicating that way. We're trying to keep up with that, and it uh, seems to be working quite well. Us more electronic challenged individuals like myself, we're still <laughs> struggling with that. I, I like that eye to eye, face to face contact. Sure. But I'm learning. They're they're slowly bringing me on board. I'm using that electronic market, and to be honest, it is a lot easier. You can go out there and look at your lab results, and it'll tell you. Uh, there's a little graph on there. Right. Is this result normal, high, low? Very quickly you can look at that, have questions, contact your physician. So it's, uh, it's kind of unique. It's, healthcare is much more different now than it was 10 years ago. Exactly. Okay. The other thing we uh, were looking at, uh, we had Mike Purdue from our Director of Maintenance come in and did a presentation to the board on our specialty clinic, which is over on, uh, you know, a little bit off campus want to replace the roof and we're all saying well how long has that roof been on it's been 24 years since we put a roof on that building so we got our money's worth out of that so we are going to have to replace that we've developed some leaks in that roof and uh, so hopefully that'll be done here in the next few weeks get the purchase order out to the vendor that was chosen get that going get that roof repaired while we're still in uh, you know some nice weather the other thing if you come visit the, the hospital now we're in the process of replacing most of the lights in the hallway going from the fluorescent to an LED and uh, you will notice a substantial increase in brightness in the hallways. Uh, 
staff this morning was the first day we had most of the downstairs hallways done and some said I, I need to get my sunglasses on <laughs> it, it really brightens it up but the most important much more energy efficient exactly. these lights will pay for themselves in about 24 months so we're using less energy and the bulbs last so much longer so long term it's gonna be a fairly substantial savings to the hospital as well as we got grant money that paid for 50 percent of the cost of this project so uh, again good use of our resources and nice payback for the hospital much much brighter in the hospital okay the other thing just be aware of starting sometime in may once we start getting some warm weather we will be redoing all of our driveways repaving driveways and parking lots and it's going to be staged so as you visit the hospital just be aware there might be some new traffic patterns as we're doing that paving. It's been quite a while since we've done paving. We've tried to maintain and patch and been doing that the last three or four years and we're outside of that window. So we're actually going to be grinding up the old asphalt and laying down new. So just be aware traffic patterns might change a little bit. Front drive will still, we'll do one half and then the other half. So you still can use that front drive, but just pay attention. Might be some equipment coming the 1st of May, start doing that. How long a process will that be? We're anticipating probably a week to two weeks. Okay. Uh, you know, if they could come in and, and grind it all down, it, you know, it'd be a much shorter, but we said it's gotta be staged because we have to have that access into the hospital and not restrict our movement. So uh, they you know, the paving company, very good working with us saying, it's not how we normally do it, but we understand. So they're gonna phase it in. So we, we're not shut down completely while they do the paving. Excellent. Once we got through kind of that housekeeping and actually got into the, the financials for the month, uh, for the, had a gross revenue about 11.4 million. Uh, we wrote off 7.1 million. That's come down a little bit. The percentage is coming down, and we look at the you know what's happening with the marketplace, and we're seeing more and more folks who did not have insurance two years ago now are in that marketplace. They do have some insurance, so that you know cuts down on our bad debts and our write-offs for non-collectible accounts. Okay. So that gave us an operating revenue of 4.4 million. Uh, we had operating expenses of 4.2 million. So we was able to post a profit for the month of March of about $158,000, which again is higher than what we anticipated. We have always looked at March and April, a little bit of May have been kind of our down months. And uh, so we've, been, we've exceeded our budget so far for the year. So we hope that continues through the rest of the year. Let us build up some of those cash reserves so we can do some of the improvements we need to do to the facility. And look at uh, at uh, April yet in terms of uh, census and things like that. First half of April was really bad. Okay. Uh, this this week has picked back up again, right. and you know it's kind of difficult from our nursing perspective because you know if we have five or six patients, we're asking nurses to go home. So for quite a few days, we only had five or six inpatients. So we sent a lot of nurses home. Now the next day, we went from six patients up to 15. Now we're calling and say, hey, can you come back? So, you know, they work very well with sure. us and, and we don't like doing that. Uh, you know, nobody likes to be sent home because with low census, basically that's an unpaid day. We don't like doing that. But, uh, you know, the census have picked back up. So now we're back 15, 16 patients today. So that's a really good spot for us. So we hope that continues for the rest of the month. We're not anticipating a profit for the month at this point okay. because the first, you know, two to three weeks was really down. But hopefully this will kind of cushion that blow a little bit not make it as bad as we were anticipating. Okay. Anything else from the trustees meeting? That was pretty well the board meeting. Right. Uh, again, fairly quick meeting. Once we, we got done spending a lot of money up early that we had to spend, uh, you know, the, that's the bad point. You know, we kind of, we try to conserve cash, but sometimes you have to spend some right. funds just to make the improvements that are necessary. So we kind of got through that and, uh, right. you know, at this point I'd like to, you know, please again, do turn it over to Becky Kopka, Director of Surgical Services. We've put in a, a new procedure into our surgical department and it's called an anterior hip replacement. And I could give you very little detail because they don't <laughs> let me play with the toys back there that they have. They don't. They don't. I can't understand it. So I asked <laughs> Becky to come in to really give a good explanation of what this is. And uh, we've had two or three patients who has had the procedure gone extremely well. It you know cuts down that recovery time. So you're in and out much quicker. You're at home time. You're back to normal so much faster than off what we used to do, what we called the old procedure. And it is limited. Not everybody qualifies for this procedure at this time. There are certain requirements that, you know, it requires you to be in a, a certain physical shape. But uh, we're, we're seeing more and more folks starting to get to there. So at this point, I'd like to turn okay. over to Becky and explain what this new procedure is. Hi, Becky. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. I think John pretty much covered it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, the direct anterior hip approach. It's 
traditionally hips have been replaced by cutting through the muscle in the back of the patient. Um, that's a lot of thick muscle. There's nerves in there that can be damaged. And what this does is it causes us post-operatively to put the patients on restrictions as far as movement-wise. They have to sleep with pillows between their legs. Um, this way we can just, the surgeon, Dr. Sheedy is the one that's doing it for us. He's at Rochester. And he took the training, as I understand, to do this. Yes. Okay. He's had um, training with a specialized surgeon, and he's worked with the implant company. And our staff, as well, has went through training. Um, he just makes an incision, moves muscle aside, and doesn't have to cut through the muscle. Wow. Um, so that allows the decreased recovery time, decreased risk of dislocation, and um, almost no post-operative uh, restrictions. Yeah, and you know it takes a special surgical table to do that. So we had trialed one, and uh, you know it went so well. We see the potential for this pr uh, procedure to increase. We actually did find a refurbished table that we've purchased for that. Now it can be used for other hip procedures also, but it, you know, for us to do this anterior, it takes a special type of table to do that. So we've made that commitment. We feel that it's that important to the community to be able to come in. And again, the recovery time is just substantially less than what it has been previously. And is that the way it's going to be with the hip replacements now? I mean, basically, that's the first uh, first method of, of operation that we're going to use. I think that's the way it's going. Okay. I think, like he said, there are limitations on which patients can have these, but that's up to the. What surgeon. criteria would that involve? I think it's anatomy related, okay. so size of the patients, things like that. You know, Becky's trying to be politically correct. You know, if you're substantially overweight, right. this procedure probably will not work. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's for that person who is, you know, more of the fit person who's been very active. Um, and sometimes, you know, the hips are, are degenerated that you have to do the, the more invasive procedure. But I think as we do more and more of these and as this procedure across the country becomes more and more prevalent, I think they'll expand that patient base that can qualify for this procedure. So. That's what we're looking for as we move to the future and, and do these. I think more and more people will qualify. Right now they're being fairly selective on who does that just because of it is a, a new procedure and let's make sure it works well before we start expanding that patient base. You mentioned that the recovery time is so much quicker with this particular procedure. Uh, compare them, the, the, the two basic methods about recovery time. Well, I think it's especially quicker more in the first few weeks of recovery time. I think three months out, they'll have about the same results okay. maybe, but immediately while they're in the hospital, Brad Rogers from physical therapy, he's the director, he has talked to us about they're up the same day, you know, moving much easier, doing stairs. Um, again, that's due to less restrictions post-op. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, as Becky said, if you cut a muscle, that has to heal before it works again, whereas if you just separate it, that allows that patient then day of surgery up and walking, you know, and the faster you can get up and start moving, you know, your body starts adjusting to this new hip and, and it, the healing process is much quicker. So that's the goal is get you up, get you mobile so that this hip, you know, really works like it's supposed to. And, and I think it's just phenomenal that that technology is out there that, you know, for years and years we would, you know, cut the muscles, cut the nerves. Now this procedure allows us not to cut those separate them, work in between them. And uh, again, takes some special tools to do that. Definitely takes specialized training. Sure. Uh, you know, Dr. Sheedy spent a lot of time with other surgeons in the area who've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, assisting, watching. They actually came in on our first case and worked with him in our surgical suite saying, okay, here, you know, make sure you're doing it. Oversaw his case and they said, you're doing fine. Uh, we sent him then out to the West Coast for some specialized training. So, you know, my commitment is if we're going to do it, we're going to do it well. And I want to make sure our staff is trained to do that, not only the physician, but actually the surgical staff folks too. And, uh, you know, it, long term, uh, you're going to be in the hospital shorter. Sure. Physical therapy is less. You know, when I, when I, as the old finance guy, I mean, is a hospital says, but that's not a good thing. Uh, you know, the longer you're there, the, you know, the more we can charge. But from a patient perspective, which is what this is all about, the shorter time I can get you there, get you in, get you out, get you back on your feet, it's much better for the patient. And, and that's what it's all about long term. Average person who needs a hip replacement, uh, just one hip, both hips, do you find that they, if one hip is bad, the other one probably is too? I think. In the end, you know, they'll probably end up having the second hip. Okay. You know, problems with that because they end up using that hip more 
in the time that the first one's down. Ever an occasion when you'd replace them both at the same time? I would say no. We okay. do sometimes see multiple or both side knee replacements in the same visit, but no, not hips. Okay. How long is the particular surgery? This that we're the talking about, yeah, the new procedure. one. Yeah, right. um, I think overall it'll be about you know two hours, okay. two to three hours in the end. Yeah. It should be a slightly shorter OR time than what we were seeing under the traditional method. All so, right. um, you know, again, because of the procedure, less cutting, less suturing, it should overall everything shorter time, less time under anesthesia, which is that's the goal. We, we want to get you in and get you out as quick as we can. You know, so you're not under anesthesia for a long period of time. How many days in the hospital with this procedure? About one and a half okay. to two. Not yeah. many. And traditionally in the past, it's been four to six days. Okay. So it, it, again, the recovery time is so much quicker. And, and you know, if you are in that position, say, you know, I'm needing a hip replacement, check with your, you know. See your physician, See sure. your physician. Sure. Get with Dr. Sheedy, see if you qualify for this procedure. Uh, it. Uh, it's just phenomenal, and I think you and I have discussed before. Right. We, we know somebody that had this done, and they're just singing the praise of this procedure. It, it w went so well, and uh, and that was our first person to do it, and it went really well. So uh, you know, pretty proud of that one. Excellent, excellent. Anything else you'd like to pass along today, Becky, John? I haven't got anything okay. else. Becky, anything you'd like to share? No, thanks. All okay. right. <laughs> People who have questions about this, contact uh, their physician, Dr. Sheedy, perhaps yourself. Yes. Yeah, that kind of thing? Dr. Sheedy's office would probably okay. be the best one because, again, he's the one that's gone through that training. And, uh, you know, if, if you have a question on it, or just you know, say, yeah, I think I want to have that procedure, check, see if you meet, you know, the current guidelines. If you do, come in and see him, and we can get that scheduled. Okay. John Alley, Becky Kopka, thank you very much for being here, and thanks for the good work you guys do for our community. We appreciate that, and, of course, for the whole area that you serve. Well, you know, as I said before, I surround myself with great people. They make me look really good. And Becky's just <laughs> one of those. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.